Um, okay, can you not be so loud? Oh, shoot. Hold on. Is it recording? <laughs> um, are you guys, how are you guys coming along with the baking? It's not baking. How, like, what do you, it's not baking. Nothing's baking. Okay, can you turn that down? I don't know if people are going to be able to hear me. I don't know how it sounds. I don't know anything. Are you sure? Um, okay. How do you, you guys want to make more? Okay. Okay. Well, I hope, uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to have to just keep saying this a few minutes. I'm supposed to start. Uh, this is my read with me book club. Hi. Um, this is my first time going live. Uh, wait, are you guys? Oh, okay. Uh, this is my first time going live. My daughter and her best friend are next to me going live while they're baking. So it's probably going to be a little crazy, but it's Christmas Eve and I figure if you're hanging around, maybe you won't have anything to do. Um, we're live. Like, it doesn't matter. Or all of us. Um, so yeah, so there's some baking going on, but um, so this is I'm going to try to do this every Thursday, so hopefully some people will join. Um, so I don't know if you guys heard, Shonda Rhimes is um, debuting her new Netflix movie show thing tomorrow. It's called um, Bridgerton. And so I'm really excited about it because, you know, she's all about the drama. Um, She's all about the drama, so this is going to be really good, but I'm really excited about it because it's um, based off of the Bridgerton series from Julia Quinn, and the first one is called The Duke and I, and I want to, I'm not going to watch it tomorrow, so that's kind of really ambitious, but I want to read the book before I watch the series, so um, I did post about it on lightv.com. Oh, y'all are really loud. My... Oh my God, my daughter and her best friend are baking next to me. So normally it will not be this loud and this noisy. Um, this is the first, the first of many, hopefully. Um, but yeah, normally it, normally it won't be like this. So, but it's Christmas Eve. I wasn't doing much. I do want to do it every Thursday though. But anyway, um, so the Bridgerton series that's debuting on Netflix tomorrow from Shonda Rhimes is based off of uh, Julia Quinn. Can you see that? Just here, here. It's called The Duke and I. I posted about it. I hope you guys can hear me. And so um, this is the book that I'm reading this month. And I don't know if I'm gonna get through it in a month. I don't know if I'm gonna get to it before I get done. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna read for like 45 minutes. And um, ooh, yeah, I don't have my reading glasses. I'm gonna read for like 45 minutes. Um, feel free to get the book and join and we can have like weekly discussions as I read. Um, once I get the hang of this, cause I, I don't see comments. I don't think anybody has comments anyway, because um, yeah, they can see, <laughs> you don't want them to see you eating. <laughs> Um, I don't think anybody's going to have comments anyway. Like, I can't even see who's on because I'm pretty sure I didn't do this right, but I figure it out. Oh, wait. Oh, look. Comments are over here. Okay. Hey. Hey. Uh, Quest, I should have went live from the iPhone. I don't have an iPhone. Thank you very much. And you know, I'm an Android, so that's just how it's going to be. Thank you. Hey, Regine. Um... All right, this is going to be so distracting. You know, I have self-diagnosed ADD and... The end of a self-diagnosed yourself. I know that. Um, turn on the air. Okay, so just to recap for like the 
nine folks that are on Facebook and I don't know, the zero folks that are on Instagram. Um, so this is like just to motivate myself so I can actually read because I used to read like crazy. Um, so I'm starting off with uh, this, Julia Quinn. Duke and I get it. The reason I'm starting off with this is because tomorrow Shonda Rhimes is debuting her um, series on Netflix based off of, um, there's a series of these books based off of this. So we're going to read it. And in between, like during the week, I will, I'll still read on and then I'll recap what I, what I read because we're not going to get through all this with me reading it because that's not, that's not going to happen. So this is definitely a, a period piece right? Uh, no, not that kind of period. I thought I said period. Not that kind of period. Um, this is set in uh, the Victorian era. So, you know, Dukes and Marquise and all that. Um, so I am going to get started, y'all. I, I really probably should get reading glasses. So, yeah, and I'm going to be doing my reactions. I'm so cute. You're so cute. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. It's about to get really loud. Nicholas, I need you to keep the volume down because I'm going live to read my... I'm live right now. Yes. Oh, just a few, just a handful of people if they're, if they're able to stick around. <laughs> you got jokes? <laughs> you got jokes? Um, hey, hey, Cole, what's up, guys? Hold on, Regine, I don't have, um, I don't know where they are. I lost my reading glasses. I don't know where they are. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> I don't know where my reading glasses are. Nico, um, um, your uncle quested for you to read it. Read what? <laughs> read what? No, that's oh, the wrong. Let me see it. No, that's the wrong. That's all right. That's all right. Stop. You're wasting time. Regine said, hey. First of all. Oh, man. This is what you want me to read. This is what you want me to read. Read the instructions. I don't want to read this one. Nah. Give me the book. All right, I'm gonna get started. I'm gonna get started. I, I'm getting. Hey, Sheila, did you turn the air down? Cause I am hot. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to get started. Okay. I bet you bought your reading glasses from CBS. Um. Listen, I, I would have bought it from CBS. I don't I don't know where I got I probably got it from Walmart. I don't know where I got it from, but I, I I'm gonna get some fancy reading glasses, but I'll lose them. So anyway, why are you standing here? Why are you standing here? Okay, so the name of the book is Julia uh The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. It was published a long time ago. I actually went and bought a new one, but I told you I used to read a lot, so um I already had it. So I went and I returned that sucker. Um, again, please visit. I posted some stuff on the blog. It's lightv.com, L I T E V I.com. So there's a $10 store. Oh, you know where five and below might have it. So I might get it from there. I know I did move. Okay, so I'm going to get started. <clears throat> All right, again, this is a period piece. So it should be pretty interesting. And I'm, I'm, Nick's not going to do the voices. I'm not going to do the voices. Let's see. And don't make fun of me, the character voices. And don't make fun of me when I'm like going like this. Okay. Well, 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 y'all got to at least. Shh, shh. Okay. I thought y'all were going to watch. Um... All right. Okay. So here we go. Um... All right. I'm going to do about, I'm going to do about like 30 minutes. Or you can be like Haitian parents. Don't don't sleep on the thrift store in the Goodwills though. I I, I ain't shame. Don't don't sleep on it. Whoa whoa whoa! Who's gonna watch the Who's gonna watch the cookies while you're in there? Once I start reading. Ten minutes. Who, who, who you set your time up for ten minutes? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here we go. All right. So here's the prologue. 
All right. So the birth of Simon Arthur Henry Fitzron Mupp Bassett, Earl Cliveden was met with great celebration. Church bells rang for hours. Champagne flowed freely through the gargantuan. Y'all know I'm going to be stumbling over some words. I like five and below. Um, gargantuan castle that the newborn would call home. And the entire village of the Cliveden quit work quit work to partake of the feast and holiday ordered by the young Earl's father. This, the baker said to the blacksmith, is no ordinary baby. For Simon Arthur Henry Fitzroll up, I'm going to have a hard time with that name right there. I don't know where my glasses are. Stop interrupting. Dang. Um, Bassett would not spend his life as Earl Cliveden. That was a mere courtesy title. Simon Arthur Henry Filtz Ronup Bassett, the baby who possessed more names than any baby could possibly need, right? Was the heir to one of England's to one of England's oldest and richest dukedoms. And his father, the ninth Duke of Hastings, had waited for years for this moment. All right. So you know back then if you didn't have a son you didn't like you you weren't shit right if you didn't have a son so obviously this dude had been waiting a long time to have a son boy would you move all right as he stood in the hall outside of his wife's confinement room cradling the squalling infant the duke's heart near burst with pride already several years past 40 he had watched his cronies dukes and earls all beget heir after heir some had had to suffer through a few daughters before siring a precious son. Okay, suffer, suffer through a few daughters. See, I don't, mm, don't, don't get me started. Don't. <laughs> okay, if y'all gonna send me glasses, send me cute glasses. Okay, I'm gonna go read that, read that last sentence again because it was, it, it was rude. As he stood in the hall outside his wife's confinement room, cradling the squalling infant, the Duke's heart near burst with pride. Already several years past 40, he had watched his cronies, dukes and earls, all beget heir after heir. Some had had to suffer through a few daughters before siring a precious son. But in the end, they'd all been assured that their lines would continue, that their blood would pass forward into the next generation of England's elite. I'm I'm doing it without reading glasses. So thank you very much, but I'll take them. Um, okay, but not the Duke of Hastings. Though his wife had managed to conceive five times in the 15 years of their marriage, only twice had she carried to full term and both of those infants had been stillborn. Dang. Okay, so she conceived five times and none of them, none of them, none of them happened. That's sad. That's sad, y'all. That That's sad. Okay. <clears throat> What's this? Thank you. Um, after the fifth pregnancy, which had ended with a bloody miscarriage in the fifth month, Surgeons and physicians alike had warned their graces that they absolutely must not make another attempt to have a child. The Duchess's very life was in danger. She was too frail, too weak, and perhaps they said gently, too old. <laughs> no, no, no. It was with the same husband. It was with her husband. She wasn't a, th it was with her husband. Five times with her husband. Stop it. Don't call her that. Y'all are just wrong. All right. So, and the last one was a, um, ended in bloody miscarriage. All right. <clears throat> the Duchess' very life was in danger. She was too frail and too weak, and perhaps, they said gently, too old. Yes, with her husband, the same guy. <laughs> the Duke was simply going to have to reconcile himself to the fact that the dukedom would pass outside of the Bassett family. Because, well, it didn't even matter if he did have a girl, because if he did have a girl, it, it wouldn't go to the girl anyway. So there's that. But the Duchess, God bless her, knew her role in life. And after a six month recuperative period, she opened the connecting door between their bedrooms and the Duke once again commenced his quest for a son. Um, Listen, 
first of all, she just had a bloody miscarriage, right? And then she could die. They told her she could die. But it was so serious back then to have a baby that they were like, um, okay, I'm gonna pause. Vlad, if you were paying attention, I'm gonna read for like 30 minutes or so. Then I'm gonna read on my own. Then when I come back next week, I'm gonna summarize what I have read and then continue to read. <sighs> okay. What, Marjorie Effin? What? Yes, yeah, she opened the connecting room so that they can get busy again. <laughs> she opened the connecting room so they can get busy again. That's 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 what happened. All right. Um, five months later, the Duchess informed the Duke that she had conceived. The Duke's immediate elation was tempered by his grim determination that nothing, absolutely nothing, would cause this pregnancy to go awry. Vlad, you getting on my nerves. No, I can't start all over again. I, I will summarize it. His wife, she had five babies. None of them made it. The doctors told her she could die because he needed a son. She said, I'm going to... <laughs> right, open the connecting room is screwing. She said, I'm going to try again, even though I could die because I know you need a son. Um. Um, so, uh, reading, this is the first book and, um, Shonda Rhimes is starting her series off based on this. Uh, okay. Marjorie, you're distracting me. <laughs> Y'all got me. Y'all are cracking me up. Okay. Um, so where, where was I? Where was I? All right, so I'm gonna start. So five months later, the Duchess informed the Duke that she had conceived. The Duke's immediate elation was tempered by his grim determination that nothing, absolutely nothing, would cause this pregnancy to go awry. The Duchess was confined to her bed the minute it was realized that she missed her monthly course. Dang, now she gotta stay in bed the whole time. Um... A physician was brought in to visit her every day and halfway through the pregnancy, the Duke located the most respected doctor in London and paid him a king's ransom to abandon his practice and take up his residence at Cleveland Castle temporarily. Okay, so I'm a doctor. He must have been paid because he paid me a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money to say, forget my practice and go just wait for this lady to be pregnant, wait for this lady to have a baby, right? How much dough did this dude have? Okay, so the Duke was taking no chances this time. He would have a son and the dukedom would remain in Bassett's hand. The Duchess experienced pains on a, a month early and pillows were tucked under her hip. Gravity might keep the baby inside, Dr. Stubbs explained. The Duke thought that a sound, the Duke thought that a sound argument Okay, but they're not looking like hearts anymore. The doctor was not, y'all, you know what, y'all? I mean, he must have been getting paid a little extra something, something. All right. Um, that that is a sound argument. And once the doctor had retired for the evening, placed yet another pillow under his wife, raising her to a 20-degree angle. She remained that way for a month. A month. A month. And then finally, the moment of truth arrived. The household prayed for the Duke who, who so wanted an heir. And a few remembered to pray for the Duchess who had grown thin and frail, even as her belly had grown round and wide. They tried not to be too hopeful after all. The Duchess had already delivered the, and buried two babies. And even if she did manage to safely deliver a child, it could well be a girl. Because, you know, girls suck apparently. As the Duchess' screams grew louder and more frequent, the Duke shoved his way into her chamber, ignoring the protest of the doctor, because, you know, back in the day, they didn't, they weren't in the room when the lady was having a baby. They were home. They weren't in the room. So, um, so yeah, so there's that. Uh, okay, it was a bloody mess, but the Duke was determined to be present when the babe's sex was revealed. Okay, so he wasn't even concerned about her screaming and stuff like that. He wasn't worried about her. He was only worried that 
he wasn't, he just wanted to know that when the baby was born, he just wanted to know the sex. So he wasn't even concerned for his wife's health. Okay. Did that, that's all right. That's messed up. Um, the head appeared, then the shoulders all leaned forward to watch as the Duchess strained and pushed. And then, and then the Duke knew that there was a God and he still smiled on the Bassets. He allowed the midwife one minute to clean the baby. Yes, he just wanted a son, jerk. Then took the little boy into his arms and marched into the great hall to show him off. I have a son, he boomed, a perfect little son. And while the servants cheered and wept with relief, the Duke looked down upon the tiny little Earl and said, you are perfect. You are a Basset, you are mine. The Duke wanted to take the boy outside to prove to everyone that he had finally sired a healthy male child, but there was a slight chill in the early April air. So he allowed the midwife to take the babe back to his mother. The Duke, first of all, he didn't even let the, ooh, 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 child, right? Like he didn't even let the mom like hug up on the baby. He don't even know what's going on with his wife. Like she could have bled out for all he know man okay the duke mounted one of his prize geldings and rode off to celebrate shouting <laughs> wait he didn't go back he didn't go back to check on his wife he just, sorry wait, wait wait let me uh shouting his good fortune to all who would listen meanwhile meanwhile while he's off riding riding to talk about this baby okay meanwhile the duchess who had been bleeding steadily since the birth slipped away into unconsciousness and then finally just slipped away so she died he's over here riding around on his horse talking about he done had a baby a boy to be exact okay the duke mourned his wife he truly did he hadn't loved her of course well there you go there you go let me read that again the duke mourned his wife he truly did he hadn't loved her, of course, and she hadn't loved him, but they'd been friends in an oddly distant sort of way. The Duke hadn't expected anything more from marriage than a son and an heir, and in that regard, his wife had proven herself an exemplary spouse. He arranged for fresh, fresh flowers to be laid at the base of her funeral monument every week, no matter, huh? Oh, that's why I have it on, on thing. Oh, shoot. Dang it. What just happened? Oh, see now I just, I done messed up on um, Instagram. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. Um, yes. That the... <laughs> oh, God. I'm sorry, y'all. It, it's, it's okay. All right. Um, all right. It might be. Uh, he arranged for fresh flowers to be laid at the base of her funeral monument every week, no matter the season. And her portrait was moved from the sitting room to the hall in a position of great honor over the staircase, all because she popped out this baby for him. Okay. That's why. All because she popped out. Boy, if she hadn't popped out the baby, that. That um, <laughs> they're they might they're Jim's friend. If she hadn't popped out that baby, that painting of hers would have stayed in the darn might have been stayed in the darn sitting room. Okay. Um. All right. And then the Duke got on with the business of raising his son. There wasn't much he could do in the first year, of course. The babe was too young for lectures on land management and responsibility. So the Duke left Simon in the care of his nurse and went to London. Okay. Okay. So, so, yeah. So the Duke had this baby. The lady died so the Duke could have his baby. And then in the first year, the Duke just left. Like he was just like, all right, peace out, nanny. Take care of the baby. I'm out. I'll see you when I see you later. Okay. Um, London, where his life continued much as it had before, blessed by parenthood, except that he forced everyone, even the king, to gaze upon the miniature he had painted of his son shortly after his birth. The Duke 
visited Cliveden from time to time, then returned for good on Simon's second birthday, ready to take the young lad's education in hand. Um, <laughs> you're funny. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. A pony had been purchased. A small gun had been selected for future use to fox hunt. And tutors were engaged in every subject known to man. He is too young for all that, Nurse Hopkins explained. Explained at two years old. He got all this at two years old. Okay. Nonsense, Hastings replied condescendingly. He was a dick. Clearly, I don't expect him to master any of this anytime soon, but it's never too early to begin a duke's education. He's not a duke, nurse muttered. Nurse is trying to get fired. He will be. Hastings turned his back on her and crouched beside his son, who was building an asymmetrical castle with a set of blocks on the floor. The the Duke hadn't been down to Cliveden in several months and was pleased with Simon's growth. He was sturdy, healthy young boy with glossy brown hair and clear blue eyes. What are you building there, son? Simon smiled and pointed. Hastings looked up at Nurse Hopkins. Hopkins, doesn't he speak? Oh, shoot. Oh, it's about to be a problem. She shook her head. Not yet, your grace. The Duke frowned. He's two. Shouldn't he be speaking? Some children take longer than others, Your Grace. He's clearly a bright young boy. Of course he's bright. He's a basset. Nurse nodded. She always nodded. What happened there? Nurse nodded. She always nodded when the Duke talked about the super superiority of basset blood. Maybe, she suggested, he just doesn't have anything he wants to say. The Duke didn't look convinced, but he handed Simon a toy soldier, patted him on the head, and left the house to go exercise the new mare he purchased from Lord Worth. Um, okay, so the little boy, what you missed, Marjorie, is the little boy might be, he, he might not be as advanced as daddy would like. Daddy left him for a year and then came back. He's two years old. <laughs> Shirley, Shirley said the baby might be mute. Well, that's that's a nicer way to put it. I mean, that's a blunt way to put it. Shirley, I was trying to be nice, but yes, the baby, the baby might not be talking. All right, two years later, and then the, and then he left. So two years later, however, he wasn't so sanguine. Why isn't he talking? He boomed. So the baby's four now. The baby's still not talking. Um. That, that's a problem. Baby's four and he's still not talking. So here we go. I don't know, nurse answered, wringing her hands. What have you done to him? Oh, shoot. The nurse is about to lose her job. I haven't done anything. If you'd been doing your job correctly, he, the Duke jabbed an angry finger in Simon's direction, would be speaking. Simon, who was practicing his letters at his miniature desk, watched the exchange with interest. He's four years old, God damn it, the Duke roared. He should be able to speak. He can write, nurse said quickly. Five children I've raised and not one of them took to letters the way Master Simon has. <laughs> Does the baby know who his real daddy is? I mean, I don't know. I don't remember this book, so y'all are going to find out with me. He might not be his dad. I don't know, but he's not talking. Okay. Um, a fat lot of good writing is going to do him if he can't talk. Haston turned to Simon, rage burning in his eyes. Talk to me, damn you. Well, damn. Simon shrank, Simon shrank back, his lower lips quivering. Your grace, nurse exclaimed. You're scaring the child. Hastings whipped around to face her. Maybe he needs scaring. Maybe what he needs is a good dose of discipline. A good paddling might help him find his voice. Oh, he gonna beat he gonna beat the baby into talking. That's what he's gonna beat his baby to talk. That's that's because that's the answer. The Duke grabbed the silver backed brush nurse used on Simon's hair and advanced on his son. I'll make you talk, you stupid little. No, nurse gasped. The Duke dropped the brush. It was the first time they'd ever heard Simon's voice. Oh, Simon said no. Boy, I read that wrong. Um, 
Yeah, so he was going to beat the child, and Simon was like, no. All right, let me read that again the right way. All right. The Duke grabbed the silverback brush, nurse used on Simon's hair, and advanced on his son. I'll make you talk, you stupid little. No! That's supposed to be my baby voice. Nurse gasped. The Duke dropped the brush. It was the first time they'd ever heard Simon's voice. What did you say? The Duke whispered, tears forming in his eyes. Simon's fists balled at his sides and his little chin jumped out as he said, don't you. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. Don't you. <laughs> the Duke's face turned deathly pale. What did. <laughs> Okay, wait. The Duke's face turned deathly pale. What is he saying? Simon attempted the sentence again. D d d d d my God, the Duke breathed horrified. He's a moron. Wow, he is not nice. <laughs> I know, I know, I'm not, I'm so, I know, I shouldn't have laughed. I know, this was that. That wasn't right. You're right. Um, but I'm better than the Duke's reaction. He's not a moron, nurse cried out, throwing her arms around the boy. D -d 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 Don't you. <laughs> I'm not making this up. This is in the book. Okay. <laughs> Hit. Simon took a deep breath. Me. Hastings sank onto the window seat, his head dropping into his hands. What have I done to deserve this? What could I have possibly done? Well, you just a stank person. You, sh you should be giving the boy praise, Nurse Hopkins admonished. Four years you've been waiting for him to speak and, and he's an idiot, Haston roared, a goddamn bloody little idiot. Simon began to cry. Hastings is going, Hastings is going to go. Haste, oh, okay, I got it. Hastings is going to go to a halfway, the Duke moans. All those years of praying for an heir, and now it's all for ruins. I should have let the title go to my cousin. He turned back to his son, who was sniffling, sniffling and wiping his eyes, trying to appear strong for his father. I can't even look at him, he gasped. I can't even bear to look at him. And with that, the Duke stalked out of the room. Nurse Hopkins hugged the boy close. You're not an idiot, she whispered fiercely. You're the smartest little boy I know. And if anyone can learn to talk properly, I know it's you. Simon turned into her warm embrace and sobbed. We'll show him, Nurse vowed. He'll eat his words if it's the last thing he does. If it's the last thing I do. Well, it might be the last thing you do. Honestly. Okay. So, um, so far, Duke was trying to have a kid. Uh, he couldn't have a kid. His wife had like five babies or had five births. Two were miscarriages. She finally had one. She died. He was excited. He finally has an heir. He went to visit the boy, left the boy, went to visit the boy. Um, boy can't speak. And then he finds out the boy has a stutter. I mean, that's not... A stutter can be fixed. All right, let me stop playing because um, let me move on. All right, Nurse Hop, I'm going I'm to try to go fast. Nurse Hopkins proved true to her word. While the Duke of Hastings removed himself to London and tried to pretend he had no son, she spent every waking minute with Simon, sounding out words and syllables, praising, uh, praising him lavishly when he got something right and giving him encouraging words when he didn't. Okay, so anybody, um, anybody who joined, hopped off, joined, whatever, um, Hey, Marjorie, I'm reading uh, Julia Quinn, The Duke and I, because Shonda Rhimes, she's starting a series tomorrow. Well, it's airing tomorrow on Netflix called Bridgerton, and it's based off this series from Julia Quinn. And this is the first book in the series. And I read it a long time ago, so I thought I'd read it again. And in order to motivate myself to actually start reading again every week, I'm going to read to you guys and summarize what I've read before. So... Uh, that's that that's where we're at. So and I just did a quick summary to catch up. So um 
All right. The progress was slow, but Simon's speech did improve. By the time he was six, da 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 da, da had turned into da 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 don't. So da 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 don't had turned into da da don't. So she cut cut it down a lot. It got cut down a lot. Okay. And by the time he was eight, he was managing entire sentences without faltering. He still ran into trouble when he was upset, and nurse had to remind him often that he needed to remain calm and collected if he wanted to get the words out in one piece. But Simon was determined, and Simon was smart, and perhaps most importantly, he was damn stubborn, probably like his daddy. He learned to take breaths before each sentence and to think about his words before he attempted to say them. He studied the feel of his mouth when he when he spoke correctly and tried to analyze what went wrong when he didn't. And finally, at the age of 11, he turned to Nurse Hopkins, paused to collect his thoughts and said, I think it's time we went to see my father. Y'all don't need to go see him. He don't need to go see his daddy. He really don't. Like, bump that dude. And, okay. Nurse looked up sharply. <laughs> they're in the, they're in the, they're, they're in Nick's room. Um, and finally at the age of, okay, okay, okay. Nurse looked up sharply. The Duke had not laid eyes on the boy in seven years. Seven years this dude hadn't seen his son. And he had not answered a single one of the letters Simon had sent him. Simon had sent nearly a hundred. Ugh. Are you certain? She asked. Simon nodded. Very well then. I'll order the carriage. We'll leave from, we'll leave for London on the morrow. The trip took a day and a half, and it was late afternoon by the time their carriage rolled up to Bassett House. Simon gazed as the busy London streetscape with nurse gazed at the busy London streetscape uh, with ner with wonder as Nurse Hopkins led him up the stairs. Neither had ever visited Bassett House before, and so Nurse didn't know what to do when she reached the front door. Other than knock, the door swung open within seconds, and they found themselves being looked up looked down upon by a rather imposing butler. Deliveries, he intoned, reach even the butler is snotty. Dang. Like, dude. Deliveries, he intoned, reaching to close the door, uh, to close the door, are made in the rear. Hold there, nurse said quickly, jamming her foot in the door. We are not servants. The butler looked disdainfully at her garments. Well, I am, but he's not. The uh, the uh, she grabbed Simon's arm. She grabbed Simon's arm and yanked him forward. This is Earl Cliveland, and you do well to treat him with respect. The butler's mouth actually drops open, and he blinked several times before saying, it is my my understanding that the Earl Cliveland was dead. <laughs> yeah. This man went back to London, never checked on his son or anything, and told those people that boy had died. Ooh, what a jerk. Like, I don't know what's going to happen to him, but I, I don't really want to wish. Let me just read. Okay. Let me read. Mm. All right. Where was I? Because that whole, um, <clears throat> I most certainly am not, Simon, ex Simon exclaimed. What? The, the guy told, I don't know if y'all are talking about a story. I don't know if you're talking about where the kids at um the guy the earl the duke went back to his life in london and told everybody that um his son was dead all because he had a stutter so um well i'm not but he wait where was i i don't know right it is my it is my it is my understanding that the Earl Cliveland is dead. What? Nurse Screech. I most certainly am not, Simon exclaimed with all the righteous indignation of an eleven year old. The butler examined Simon, recognized immediately that he had the look of the basset, and ushered them in. Why did you think I was dead? Simon asked, cursing himself for misspeaking, but not surprised. He was always most likely to stutter when he was angry. It is not for me to say, the butler replied. It most certainly is, nurse shot back. You can't say something like that to a boy of his years and not explain it. Now I'm saying it to a little, now I'm saying a little attitude. The butler was silent for a moment, then finally said, his grace has not mentioned you in years. The last I heard, he said he had no son. He looked quite pained and he said, and he said it. So no one pursued the conversation. 
We servants, that is, assumed you'd pass on. Simon felt his jaw clench, felt his throat working wildly. Wouldn't he have gone to mourning, nurse demanded. Did you think about that? How could you have assumed the boy was dead if the father was not in mourning? The butler shrugged. His grace frequently wears black. Mourning wouldn't have altered his costume. This is an outrage, Nurse Hawkins said. I demand you summon his grace at once. Simon said nothing. He was trying too hard to get his emotions under control. Uh, he had to. There was no way he'd be able to talk with his father with his blood racing so. The butler nodded. He's upstairs. I'll alert him immediately to your arrival. Nurse started pacing wildly, muttering under her breath and referring to his grace with every vile word in her surprisingly extensive vocabulary. Simon remained in the center of the room, his arms angry, sticks at his side as he took deep breaths. You can do this, he shouted in his mind. You can do this. Poor boy. Nurse turned to him and saw him trying to control his temper and immediately gasped. Yes, that's it, she said quickly, dropping to her knees and taking his hands in hers. She knew better than anyone what would happen if Simon tried to face his father before he calmed down. Take deep breaths and make sure to think about your words before you speak it, if you can control it. So this is the first time he's going to see his father since his father abandoned him. And he's trying to he's trying to keep it together. Okay, if you're still molly coddling, oh, here we go. Nurse... <clears throat> All right. Uh, she knew better than anyone what would happen if Simon tried to face his father before he calmed down. Take deep breaths and make sure to think about your words before you speak. Even if you can, if you're still molly coddling the boy, came in, came in an imperious voice from the doorway. Nurse, Hos Nurse Hopkins straightened and turned slowly around. She tried to think of something respectful to say. She tried to think of anything that would smooth over this awful situation. But when she looked at the Duke, she saw Simon in him and her rage began anew. The Duke might look just like his son, but he was certainly no father to him. Okay, you got off again, Margie? So the boy stuttered the duke practically like disowned him left him to the nannies went to england so the boy had been working on his stuttering <laughs> so the boy had been working on the stuttering the dad disowned him after he realized he stuttered so the boy had been working on his stuttering to get it right he went over to the house to ink to london and the butler thought he was dead so the butler was just like oh i thought you were dead because your father never mentioned you so i thought you were dead he wasn't dead. And now he's meeting with the dad for the first time. And he, they were both, the nurse and him, hoping he don't stutter. And the dad's still an ass. There, I just summarized it. Okay, so, uh, all right. You, sir, she spat out, are despicable. The nurse is for sure going to lose her job. And you, madam, are fired. Boom. Nurse lurched back. No one speaks to Duke of Hastings that way, he roared. No one. Not even the king, Simon taunted. Hastings whirled around, not even noticing that his son had spoken clearly. You, he said in a low voice. Simon nodded curtly. He managed one sentence properly, but if he had been a short one, um, but if it had been a short one and he didn't want to, but it had been a short one and he didn't want to push his luck. Not when he was this upset. Normally he could go days without a stutter, but now... The way his father stared at him made him feel like an infant, an idiot infant, and his tongue suddenly felt awkward and thick. No, don't do it. The Duke smiled cruelly. What do you have to say for yourself, boy? Eh? What do you have to say? It's all right, Simon, Nurse Hopkins whispered, throwing a furious glance at the Duke. Don't let him upset you. You can do it, sweetling. And somehow her encouraging tone made it all worse. Simon had come here to prove himself to his father, and now his nurse was treating him like a baby. What's the matter, the Duke taunted. Cat got your tongue. I just want to beat him up. I don't like him. I just want to beat him up. <clears throat> All right. Simon's muscles clenched so hard that he started to shake. Father and son stared at each other for what felt like an eternity until finally the Duke swore and stalked. Uh, stalked towards the door. You are my worst failure, he hissed at his son. I don't know what I did to deserve you, but God help me if I ever lay eyes on you again. Your grace, uh, Nancy Hopkins said indignantly. This is no way to speak to a child. Get him out of my sight. You can keep your job just so as long as you keep him away from me. Wait, 
The Duke turned slowly around at the sound of Simon's voice. Did you say something? He drawled. Simon took three long breaths in through his nose. His mouth was still clamped together in anger. He forced his jaw to relax and rubbed his tongue against the roof of his mouth, trying to remain uh, calm. I am your son. Simon heard the nurse Hopskin breathe a sigh of relief and something he'd never seen before blossomed in his father's eyes. Pride, not much of it, but there was something there lurking in the depths, something that gave Simon a whisper of hope. I am your son, he said again, this time a little louder, and I am not. Suddenly his throat closed and Simon panicked. You can do this. You can do this. Oh, damn. Um, but, but his throat felt tight and the tongue felt thick and his father's eyes started to narrow. I am not the Go home, the Duke said in low voice. There is no place for you here. Simon felt the Duke's rejection in his very bones, felt a particular kind of pain enter his body and creep around his heart. And a hatred flooded his body and poured from his eyes and made a, made, he made a solemn vow. If he couldn't be the son his father wanted, then by God, he'd be the exact opposite. Okay, so that was the, the, the prologue. Um, that was fun. Uh, and next week, um, I'll probably be a lot further. So I'll have stuff to summarize for you guys and read some more. Uh, again, I'm actually not watching. If you want to watch the, the, the show starts tomorrow, I won't be watching it until, um, until I'm done with the first book. So I can kind of remember some stuff, but, um, thanks for joining me and share it. Um, and I'll be here every week. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Eve. Um, yeah, the mom died for all that. The mom died for nothing. Well, I'm not going to say she died for nothing. <laughs> Vladimir, I'm trying not to cuss on these people live, but you you going you making it hard. Um, so Thursday, Thursday, uh 7:30 ish, I will be on here. So, uh share and um yeah this 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 was fun all right merry christmas uh i hope everybody has a great evening and um y'all just really bye Wait, how do I, oh, I don't know how to end. How do I end this? Bye, Merry Christmas. No, it's not good.